A few weeks ago, Danny asked me for feedback on the new design. Danny's a friend and a fellow Mastermind group member, so I was more than happy to help. He already used some of that feedback, but in this video I go into more details. We'll also look at what makes the new design better than the old one, and what ideas you can use in your website or blog. When you start thinking about how to build a website, the first and most important thing to think about is what will a first-time visitor think about the site. They don't know you, they don't know what the site is about, they don't know if they should stay or leave. Your website's first job is to answer those questions in the right way. Usually the header with your site's name and tagline tell what the site is about. If they don't do that, you should reconsider them. But it isn't enough that they're informative. They also need to be eye-catching, otherwise visitors won't notice them. If we look at the old design, the offer for the video training is visually more prominent than the logo and the tagline. In other words, the opt-in box is the first focus point. Focus point isn't a proper marketing term, but I think it explains the idea well. Your site's visitors naturally focus on specific places on your site in a specific order, and you should control what those places are and in which order they're focused on. When you're in control, you can make sure people see the things you want them to see, and that allows you to control what they think about the site, which means you can keep them reading more. In the new design, the opt-in box has vanished from the header, which gives more space for the logo and tagline, but now the header is quite narrow, which makes it less prominent. I'd make the header higher to make it clearly the first place to look at, or the first focus point. I'd also rethink the tagline's font. Now it looks handwritten, which is fun and interesting, but also more difficult to read than plain fonts. It's not really difficult to read it now, but it would be significantly easier if it were even slightly larger. Under the header is a bar of logos of some of the places where Firepole marketing has been featured. If you have an impressive list like this, it's a great way to gain credibility. As the bar is so narrow, it doesn't take too much space, and it's one of the best parts of the new design in my opinion. In the old design, the navigation bar was there, which is a much more common solution. But as this design proves, you really shouldn't just copy what's normal and believe it's the best option. One small note about the navigation bar is that the links don't really look like links. If they'd be underlined or wouldn't be all uppercase, it would be clearer that they're meant to be clicked. That might seem irrelevant, as many navigation bars don't make the links too obvious. But the more obvious it is that something should be clicked, the more it attracts the eye and invites the click. The new design uses an automatic slider to showcase offers like ebooks and webinars. Sliders are currently a fashion, but their usefulness is at least questionable. The basic idea is tempting. You get to show a lot of value in a small space and let visitors choose what they're most interested in. But there are three problems. Firstly, sliders look like ads, and because of that many people automatically skip them. Secondly, if the slider is so slow that you have time to understand what each slide promotes, it's also so slow that most visitors won't see more than the first or maybe second slide. And thirdly, if the slider is fast enough so that visitors will see all the slides, then it's also so fast that they can't really focus on any of the slides. There are a couple of situations where I test using a slider and expect it to work well, but right under the header, like here, isn't one of those. Instead, I test which of the offers converts most, and I'd stick to that one. Or you could make the offer change with each page, so that when a visitor clicks to a new page, they see another offer. Overall, the top part of the new design is better than the old one, but it does lack a clear first focus point, which would make it more engaging. And I do wonder why the Twitter logo and RSS feeds have such a central place when Danny's own marketing is based on his email list. So instead of having those logos, the text join 17,000 plus monthly readers could be larger. It would capture visitors' attention more, and if for example the word join would be a link that leads to an opt-in landing page, it would be better aligned with the business goals. Another thing that would make the top part of the page clearer would be making the slider bigger, and yes, I'd still consider changing it to a static picture. One thing that's missing from the site is a home page. Now the main page is the blog page with the latest posts. The reason why home pages are useful is that they're great for telling the first time visitors what your site is about and why they should trust you and read more. A home page should also give them a simple way to get closer to the content they're most interested in. Firepole Marketing does have a start here page, which is a decent substitute for a home page. But instead of really creating trust or explaining what the site is about, it only asks people to get the video training course. I'm not saying the page shouldn't offer that, but before making that offer, the page should give the visitor some time to understand where they are and why they should stay there. If we go back to the blog page, the next section is the posts. This part didn't change that much from the old design. The main difference is that it's wider, and there are no extra borders that made the old design look slightly clunky. 
The one thing I'd change is the read more link. If it were a button instead of just text, it would attract more attention, which would lead to more people clicking it. Also, after the first few posts, the page breaks into two columns. There's nothing wrong with using columns, but as these are very narrow, I don't know if there's any benefit in using them. The sidebar in the new design is one of the most significant changes. Instead of having two very narrow columns, the new sidebar has only one column. The content is very simple. The search box is first, then comes ads for Danny's free books, then there's a list of popular posts, and finally an ad for his consultation. I would make a couple of changes. I'd move the search box under the ebook offers. People who want to search for content will find it there, and anyway the ebook offers are more important. I'd also make the ads bigger. Instead of having the picture of the book and text side by side, they could be on top of each other. That would make the pictures much more engaging, and the text could be bigger. It might also make sense to have a sign-up form under the books, so you could get both books easily with one subscription. The list of popular posts is almost always a good idea to have in a sidebar. By definition, they're the articles new visitors are most likely to find interesting. I'd make the font bigger and separate headlines from each other more clearly. That would make it easier for the visitor to notice there's something to read. Finally, the ad for consultation at the end of the sidebar could be bigger. It's always nice to keep things neat and small, but when it's an ad, the most important thing is to get it noticed. Just another sentence, a slightly bigger picture and more visible button would make a big difference. At the end of the page is the footer. Again there are the links to Twitter and RSS feeds. And again, I'd reconsider having them there. Footer is a good place for a sign-up box. There's also another slider with posts. Here the idea is to promote key posts on all blog pages. It might actually work because it captures attention. But if Danny will change the Twitter logo and RSS logos to an opt-in form, then the slider is a distraction from that. The very last thing on the page is an ad for a web hosting company. The same ad was there in the old design as well, so maybe it's creating good returns. But it feels out of place, and if it doesn't create good revenue, I'd take it away. If we look at the single post pages, most of the things don't change. At the end of the post there are links to the next and previous posts. I don't know if these are necessary. Instead, I'd put a list of popular posts or a list of related posts here. That would make it more likely for readers to find something that's interesting for them. There's also an ad for the video training, which is just the right thing to put here. When the reader has taken the time to read to the end of a post, they're likely to be interested in what your free offer is about. Somewhere along the way down the page, an additional sign-up box appears to the bottom right corner. This kind of a box can have a good conversion rate, but that's something you'll only know after testing it. The last page we'll look at is an opt-in landing page for the video training. The layout is a decent compromise between functionality and focus on the content, but I'd take away the links to Twitter and RSS feeds from the header and the web hosting ad in the footer. The navigation bar is questionable. On one hand it makes it less likely that visitors would leave the site, but on the other hand it makes it more likely that they'll leave this page without opting in. The video of the page is good, but the other content could be better. The main problem is that it doesn't look interesting. People judge content online very much based on what it looks like, and when the text is grey and so wide, it doesn't invite people to read it. The opt-in form could also look a bit more professional. Overall the new design is a step up, but there are still a few things that would make it convert better. This video was about how to design a website that gets your visitors to do what you want them to do, but that's only one of the five online conversion points you need to get right to get to your goals. If you want to make your online marketing create better results, check out my free video course that goes into details of all the conversion points. You'll also immediately get, as a free bonus, the ebook 101 Headline Formulas, which helps you capture attention and get your message read to the end, and the landing page checklist that explains the 11 most important keys to high conversion. My name is Peter Sandin. I show businesses how they'll get more leads and customers. If you have any questions about this video, please leave a comment or send me an email.